Tequileros, this is Ro, and today we have another Mexico piece by piece. This time we're going to be talking about Coahuila, the state where you will find the very enigmatic and mysterious silent zone. Want to learn about it? Stay tuned! Welcome to the Tequila Princess channel! to my channel. Hi, my name is Rocio and I'm dedicated to promote Mexico for people who doesn't know what an amazing place it is. And for that, I created this series, Mexico Piece by Piece, where I am walking you through every single state of Mexico, one by one, showing you everything there is to do and see. Today, I'm going to be talking about the third biggest state in Mexico, Coahuila. It is located in the north, almost in the center of the country, and it is a frontier state with the United States. There are several versions of the meaning of this state, but the one that I like the most is this one. Coahuila comes from two Nahuatl words, coatl, serpiente, and huila, or huilota, which means dove, making it the place of the flying serpents. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> And the climate for this state is quite dry and a little bit extreme. Most of the state is a huge desert, but you will find in the Sierras a more foresty kind of environment. So while the summers can be really hot, with the highest ever recorded temperature being 57 Celsius degrees, during the winters you will also find very low temperatures going even to minus 10 Celsius degrees. So when you're planning your trip to Coahuila, make sure to check the weather. Let's talk about Pueblos Magico, a government's program that will give some extra budget to some selected towns that represent the best the culture and traditions of the country. And Coahuila is the state that has the most Pueblos Magicos in Mexico, having seven Pueblos Magicos. Let's start with Arteaga, also known as the Mexican Switzerland. Walking in downtown, you will find a beautiful temple dedicated to San Isidro Labrador. The weather is usually more moderate, so during the summer you will find a nice temperature of 26 to 30 Celsius degrees. Walking around the streets of Arteaga, you will find many candy, confections and liquors made with the local production, which is apples golden delicious and red delicious. But the thing that has made Arteaga very popular, not only in Mexico, but in the whole continent, is a ski. Bosques de Monterreal is a private resort where you can practice hiking, camping, mountain biking, and of course, ski. They have a ski ramp where you can practice or learn ski during the whole year, either with an artificial material or with real snow during the winter. It is 30 meters long and it has an inclination of 30 degrees. But if you are not yet comfortable or you are just learning to ski, you can also use the shorter ramp, which is a 45 meter one that is destined for the people who's learning and also for slides. Visiting Arteaga during winter is definitely the best option. So you can see the whole mountains that surround it covered in snow. The next magical town that we are visiting is Candela, with its very particular Cerro de Candela that looks like a candle. That's where the name comes from. One of the first things that you will see while arriving to Candela is the train station. Back in the beginnings of the last century, it was a very important train station, and the construction resembles the medieval style, which makes it very unique and pretty. And once inside the town, you will find a simple yet pretty temple dedicated to San Carlos Borromeo. But although the town is quite cute, some of the biggest attractions from this place are not exactly inside of the town, but surrounding it. For example, Las Lajas, which is a part of the river where some rocks have created small water jumps. Not exactly waterfalls, but some interesting formations and people can go and swim and relax in this area. We also have nearby 
a mountain that is called El Frenton, the big forehead, because of the shape, but they will go there too because you can find La Cueva de los Murciélagos, the bat's cave. In Coahuila, you will find a lot of places with thermal waters, which are these warm or hot waters that comes from the underground, saturated with minerals such as sulfur. They are considered to be medicinal and very good for your health. Near Candela, there are at least three places where you can go and enjoy the thermal waters. Los Carricitos, Ojo Caliente, and Las Lajitas. Let's move on to the next magical town, Guerrero. Back in the 1500s, when the missions from the center of the country arrived to the north, they established the first one and from which they started spreading out precisely in Guerrero. When you are arriving to the town, you can find right in the outskirts of the town the ruins of the mission of San Bernardo. Guerrero is a small town, but it's beautiful. The only issue is that you will not find accommodation so easily because they do not have hotels. Because of that, you will have to find accommodation in one of the many ranchos that you will find around the town. There, you will also have the chance of go hunting for doves, dogs, turkeys, and deer. Although, as an animal lover, I will beg you not to hunt animals that you will not eat. Guerrero is a frontier town, which means in this part of the country that you will have what we know in Mexico as Rio Bravo, and in US is known as Rio Grande River. Half of the river belongs to US and the other half belongs to Mexico. And if you go to Guerrero, you will have the chance of doing some kayak on the river. It's a unique opportunity for navigating a frontier that is not very often available. We are continuing this tour around Coahuila in a magic town that has a lot of natural beauty, Viesca. The most popular thing to do in Viesca is to visit the Bilbao Dunes, which is a 20 square kilometers area that is covered in very fine sand. This area is believed to have been the Tetis Sea that dried out millions of years ago and that it left behind only the salts and minerals that were at the bottom of the sea. And something else that definitely deserves a visit, the protected natural area and canyon of Jimulco. This place is ideal for hiking, camping, mountain biking, and of course, mountain climbing. You can also find a few kind of hidden cave paintings on the walls of these mountains the youngest Pueblo Mágico in Coahuila is Melchor Musqui. In the town, you will find a temple dedicated to Santa Rosa de Lima. And the last Sunday of each month, outside of this temple, you will find a very particular event. A little pop-up market similar to a farmer's market, where you can find products from all the local community, including the Mexicans and a couple groups that live separated, but they are also very well integrated in the local community. The Indians Kikapu and the Mascogo tribe. Both of these groups arrived to Mexico in 1852. The Kikapu Indians looking for a peaceful place where to grow and prosper, and the Mascogo tribe fleeing the slavery in the south of US. Today you can find both of these tribes living in a place called El Nacimiento. And there are two more things that you might want to do while visiting Melchor Muskis. Go kayaking on the Rio Sabina or practice your bow and arrow shooting with the Arqueros del Carbón, a group of professional archers that prepare themselves for competitions, but they also love to share the knowledge and teach others how to use a bow and arrow. Sign me in! That's something that I have always wanted to learn. The next two magical towns are the homeland of two very important leaders of the Mexican Revolution, but we're going to talk about them after the magic towns. First, I want to tell you about Parras de la Fuente. Although there are a couple very pretty temples inside of the town, like Santuario de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe or Antiguo Templo y Colegio de San Ignacio de Loyola, the most popular temple, well, not a temple, chapel, that you need to visit is Capilla del Santo Madero. In the highest part of this hill in the city, there was some caves where the wind blew and made a lot of noises. People got scared thinking that the devil 
lived there until a very clever priest brought in a bigger cross and put it on top of the hill and convinced the whole population to make a little chapel on top of this hill to keep the devil away. It is now the place where you can get the best view of the city. But watch out because you will have to climb a lot of steps and they say that the more sins you have, the more tired you will get. <laughs> If you go to Parras de la Fuente during August, you might be lucky enough to enjoy the Grape Harvest Fest, Fiesta de la Vendimia, with a lot of celebrations and food, but the most important part will be the big horse riding procession that they will make on the Sabina River. And you know, wherever there is a grape harvest, there are wines. This area has a lot of vineyards, and they are of a great quality. There are some houses that are really, really old, like, for example, Casa Madero. But there are others that are newer, but still really, really good. For example, Wines Don Leo. Their Cabernet Sauvignon wine won as the best in the world last year in 2020. Many of the vineyards are open to be visited by the public. And the last magic town that we are going to be visiting is Cuatro Cienegas. You need to go to the downtown where you can see Plaza de Armas, the kiosk, and of course, San Jose's temple. Here you will find the Museum Venustiano Carranza and more vineyards. For example, Bodegas Ferriño and Vinos Vitali. But the biggest attraction in Cuatro Cienegas, and when I say biggest, I mean also in size, is the protected area Cuatro Cienegas. It is over 84 hectares, and it is surrounded by six different mountain chains. One of them actually divides this protected area into two. On one side you will have the dry desertic gypsum dunes, similar to the Bilbao dunes, but these ones are of a finer material. And on the other side you will find the wetlands. Over 500 different bodies of water that you can find, from the river Mesquites where you can swim in crystalline water surrounded by turtles to middle puddles and springs like the Poza Azul and El Borbollón. While visiting these or any other protected areas, please make sure to not litter the place and take all your garbage with you so that these places can continue to be as beautiful for many, many years more. Now I want to tell you about famous people from Coahuila. The first two guys that I want to tell you about are deeply connected with the Mexican Revolution times. First one is Francisco y Madero. He was born in Parras de la Fuente in 1873 and he died in 1913. He was the superior chief of the army of the Mexican Revolution and he was also the first democratically elected president from 1911 to 1913 when he was executed after the coup d'etat that was orchestrated by Victoriano Huerta. After his death, Venustiano Carranza came into the picture. He was born in Cuatro Cienegas in 1859 and he died in 1920. After Madero died, he became the head of the Mexican Constitutionalist Army. Defeating Huerta and taking temporary control of the executive power from 1914 to 1917. Now, this year, 1917, was very, very important for Mexico because that's when the new constitution, the constitution that rules us today, was formulated. And under these new constitutions, there were new elections called for, and he won again, continuing his rule as a president from 1917 to 1920, when he was killed trying to move his government to Veracruz, fleeing from another coup d'etat. But don't worry, I won't be boring you with Mexican history anymore. Now let's talk about something super exciting. There is an international challenge in the alpinism world that is called Explorer's Grand Slam. It consists in reaching the North Pole, the South Pole, and reaching the tops of the seven summits. 
which is the one highest mountain in each continent, the Everest in the Himalaya, the Aconcagua in Argentina, Mount McKinley in US, Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, Mount Elbrus in Russia, Macizo Vincent in Antarctica, and Karsten's Pyramid in Indonesia. There are so far only 30 people in the world who have accomplished this challenge. Two of them are Mexican, Ricardo Torres Nava and Carla Willa. Ricardo was born in Nueva Rosita in 1954. He was the first Latin American to reach the top of the Everest in 1989, and he is the first male to complete the Grand Slam in his first attempt. He also tried to complete the K2, but after losing his best friend on his first attempt, and almost losing his own life in the second attempt, he decided it was time to retire from mountain climbing. Carla, on the other hand, was born in Saltillo in 1968. She was the first Ibero-American woman to complete the seventh summit in 2005, and she was the first Latin American person to climb the Everest on the North Face. Both of them currently speak in conferences, although Carla is still active on the mountain climbing. And the last person that I want to tell you about is Susana Zabaleta. She was born in Monclova in 1964, and she is a singer and an actress. She studied opera in Italy, but has also incursioned in theater and pop style. As an actress, she has also been recognized for her work. And speaking about music, there is one itinerant music festival that I would like you to enjoy if you visit Coahuila during October, the Rock Coahuila Fest. As you can imagine because of the name, everything turns around rock music. They have concerts, they have workshops, and many other activities inspired by rock. It is also a great opportunity for getting to know local, national, and international bands. And I said it is itinerant because you will have different events going on in different cities of the state. And another very interesting festival that you need to check out is Festival Internacional Julio Torri. Including all sorts of art disciplines, you will find yourself flooded in colors, music, art, and culture in different kinds of events, including theater, dance, music, exhibitions, literature, and of course, cinema. A good example of the kind of music that you will be listening to during this event would be Fara Fara, which is a very particular kind of music within the northern style of music, which is a very particular interpretation of something similar to a polka. It is always played with an accordion plus another instrument. <laughs> Coahuila is the state in Mexico where the most paleontological discoveries have been made. If you take the highway Saltillo-Torreón in the municipality of General Cepeda, you will find a place called Rincón Colorado, which is an archaeological open zone where you will find a lot of dinosaur skeletons and fossils. Here, some dinosaurs unique in the whole world were discovered. And speaking about Saltillo and Torreón, those are the two most important cities in the state. Saltillo is the capital city of Coahuila. It is a kind of industrial city with a lot of movement and a lot of life. You will find very interesting buildings and constructions in the center of the city, like the government's palace, the casino, the technological university, or Santiago's Cathedral. There is also a couple museums that are super worthwhile. The first one is Museo de las Aves, the Birds Museum. Located in the Antiguo Colegio de San Juan, it has an impressive exhibition of over 3,000 species, but the most interesting thing about it is that all of them are only from Mexico. In there, you will learn about the evolution of birds from the dinosaurs to the modern ones, and it represents 70% of the total population of birds in the country. And the other one is Museo del Desierto, the Deserts Museum. As Coahuila is mostly decorated with desertic landscapes, 
Of course, they had to have a museum about it, where you can learn about the flora, fauna, and different things that you can find on the desert. And very close to Saltillo, you will find Sierra de Zapaliname. It is a beautiful mountain chain filled up with woods, canyons, plateaus, and streams that will make a beautiful and white snowy landscape during winter. The other big city that I want to tell you about is Torreón. Torreón was founded with a very particular mix of cultures. You had European, American, Arabic, a little bit of everything. Therefore, the architecture that you will find in this city is very particular. You will see a lot of different influences in several different buildings, like for example, a very particular and unique kiosk at the Plaza de Armas. And on the other hand, you have a beautiful building, House of the Theater Isauro Martinez. In the old times, there was an underground aqueduct that supplied of water for the whole town. Today, it is transformed into a commercial corridor called Canal de la Perla. Finally, you cannot leave Torreón without taking a cable car to the Cristo de las Noas. It is one of the biggest Christ representations in Latin America, and you will find it at the top of a hill where you will have a beautiful view of the whole city. Torreón is the most important city on the Coahuila side of the Comarca Lagunera, a vast area that includes six municipalities of Coahuila and 13 from Durango. We will be talking in detail about it, when we reach Durango, but I wanted to tell you about it because that's something that you will hear mentioned if you go to Coahuila. Comarca Lagunera is very popular. If you are into hiking, rock climbing, mountain climbing, and all these kind of alpinism activities, there are many places in Coahuila where you should go, but there are two that I haven't told you about yet. Cañón de San Lorenzo, with beautiful and challenging trails, and Cerro de la Viga which actually is part of the division in between the state of Coahuila and Nuevo León. It is a very demanding and steep trail that will take you to the summit of one of the tallest mountains in the state of Coahuila. Coahuila and Chihuahua are neighbors, so many of their natural resources are shared. One very good example of that would be Reserva de la Biosfera Maderas del Carmen. It is a 208 hectares area that is part of the Chihuahuense Desert. Although hiking, some ecotourism activities, and nature watching are allowed, it is home of many endangered species. That's why these activities are usually restrained to very specific areas, and it is very important that we follow the rules to make sure that these plants and animals are going to be there for future generations. It is now time to talk about mystery. In the south central part of Coahuila, inside of the protected area Bolson de Mapimi, that is also shared with Chihuahua and Durango, you will find the silence zone. For many, many years, it was a complete mystery. We believe that there are cases that were not reported because the people involved just didn't survive. In this part of Earth, the electromagnetism is so strong that the compasses don't work. The radio waves don't carry. So you find yourself in the middle of nowhere, alone, lost, and without any possibility of help. There are many and mysterious stories about people entering the silent zone without knowing, cars breaking down, and people not being able to get out of there. There are all sorts of interesting and mysterious stories about this place, like a pilot that lost touch with the control tower because his radio and most of his instruments just stopped working at all. He emergency land and survived. But there is another more interesting story about a U.S. missile that was shot in U.S., expected to hit in the south of U.S., and for some very weird odd reason it landed on the silent zone. There is even people who says that if you are standing here in a couple meters another person is there and you speak to them they won't be able to hear you. Although I'm not really sure that story is true but the other ones hmm interesting very interesting. 
But all this mystery has opened up my appetite. So what about if we start talking about food? If there is one thing that almost every state has their own version of it, that would be enchiladas. And of course, Coahuila is not the exception. They have enchiladas de olla. Enchiladas is basically a taco or a quesadilla baited with sauce. In this case, they prepare a very abundant sauce and they fry quesadillas separate. After that, they will start putting the quesadillas inside of a pot in a circular way and they will bait all of the quesadillas with the sauce in between the layers. They will put the lid of the pot and cook them. By frying them first, they will be crunchy, but when you cook them with the sauce, they will be soft again. The flavor has already changed and I already told you also that we have many different kinds of tamales here in Mexico. In Coahuila has tamales de dedo, tom tamales. And they are called like that because they are small, kind of in a bite size. They are usually not bigger than your thumb. That's why they are called like that. Another very popular classic all over the northern part of the country is cortadillo. You will use a very soft and lean kind of meat cut in small pieces. Fry it first and then you will finish cooking it with a delicious sauce made with different kind of chilies. It is usually served with beans or fried beans. And the last thing that I want to tell you about in this food section is something that is, I don't know, confusing for me. <laughs> it is a sweet but it is made with a typically savory ingredient, dulce de tomate. It is prepared with fully ripe tomatoes without the skin, cooked with cumin, pepper, and sugar, boiled until you get a confection similar to a jam. And do you know what is perfect for a great digestion? Thermal waters. I know we already talked about the candela ones, but there is one place that is even more popular, Termas de San Joaquin. It is a hotel and spa with some thermal baths constructed in a Roman style. It's beautiful and very unique. You can go to the public baths or you can stay at the hotel and get access to a more private bath area. Ideal for a moment of relaxation after a good meal. Let me tell you, before I made this video, I honestly did not know anything about Coahuila, but now I know that there are so many things to do and places to go that are now for sure in my travel bucket list. All this researching and digging the places that I already know and discovering new ones is just making me fall in love more and more with my own country. I hope that you're feeling the same and this Mexico piece by piece is leading you over little by little. Next episode of this series will be Colima. And remember, if you want to support my channel, you can do it by clicking on the link on the description box or by giving it a big thumbs up. I would also love to hear from you in the comments down below. Come on, let me know which is your favorite place in Mexico, what was your favorite part of the video, or which of the places that I talked about you have already visited. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click on the notifications bell so that you can be the first one to watch my next video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Tequila Princess out. Bye!